Hey everyone, Roof Bunny here. Welcome to my GTFO Beginner's Guide. GTFO is a survival horror 4 player co op game that can be pretty intimidating for people just starting out. Beginners often find themselves repeating a level multiple times before they get their first level clear. My guide serves to provide you with information that can improve your gameplay exponentially. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the different gears available in the game before we dive into building the most balanced team loadout. As the video aims to be as concise as possible, feel free to pause the video if you didn't quite catch what was mentioned. Before we get started, let me introduce you to a concept known as the Rundown. A Rundown is a series of expeditions available to the player in a set amount of time. Once a Rundown expires, it is completely gone and the expeditions cannot be replayed. With this expiration comes a new Rundown and the cycle repeats itself. So why is this information important? Well, in GTFO, a player's kit can be divided into four items, primary weapons, special weapons, tools, and melee weapons. In each category, there are default and rundown specific weapons. What are rundown specific weapons? Well, every now and again, these powerful weapons either show up or disappear when a new rundown drops. The rundown specific weapons are not limited to only primary weapons, but can also be extended to both special weapons and tools as well. Within Rundown 6, there are 4 default and 6 Rundown specific primary weapons available. Weapons that reward precision, weapons that serve a general purpose, and support weapons which are generally situational. While the weapons can be affixed to the specific roles listed, they are also interchangeable to fit the team's needs. When holding in the long hallway, the DMR or assault rifle might be great for picking enemies off from a distance. Holding in tight choke points? Then consider bringing the SMG or pistol for their high reliability in staggering enemies and their quick reload speeds. What about the rundown specific weapons? Well, we have heavy weapon variants, hell weapon variants, burst weapon variants, and even unique weapons of their own. Hell weapons allow for players to pierce through a minimum of two enemies in a single shot in exchange for long reload speeds or long charge up times. Burst weapons such as the Burst Rifle or the Carbine have high rates of fire and quick reload speeds. This makes them great for dishing out huge amounts of damage into a wave in a short amount of time, in exchange for committing to a full burst. Heavy weapons provide players with heavy hitting power with increased damage per bullet, but at the expense of a lower rate of fire. Other weapons such as the Odo Pistol, Machine Pistol or Sword of Shotgun are examples that serve a niche role. With their high rates of fire, the Odo Pistol and Machine Pistol are excellent tools for supporting teammates despite their low damage. On the other hand, the Sword of Shotgun fires off 8 pallets in a single shot, allowing for both great crowd control and high damage to giant targets. While the primary weapons excel in dealing with the general wave, some situations demand for heavier weaponry to be employed. Situations where multiple large enemies start showing up, or when a swarm of small enemies envelop your team are not rare occurrences. In this case, we can look to special weapons to smoothen rough engagements. Similar to the primary weapons, the default and rundown specific special weapons available can also be divided into unique roles, crowd control weapons, general purpose weapons, and specialist type weapons. Crowd control weapons excel in shredding through a large group of enemies, while specialist type weapons are great for disposing of giant targets quickly. General purpose weapons are also powerful weapons that can perform both roles but at the cost of less damage, range, or less ammo efficiency. When playing levels where you anticipate more giants than smalls, either from reading the mission brief or from past experience, it would be wise to bring more specialist type weapons such as the sniper or rundown specific weapons, the scattergun or the choke mod shotgun. In levels where the game continuously throws hordes of small enemies at you, bringing more crowd control weapons such as the revolver which kills smalls in a single headshot at modest ranges, might be great. Other rundown specific weapons like the heavy assault rifle or the machine gun can also easily decimate the horde in a few short but satisfying seconds. What about the general purpose weapons? Well, they fit every role. Having a hell gun allows for you to stand your ground if you can continuously line up your shots. On the other hand, a shotgun grants you heavy pushing power when the objectives demand you to move around frequently. Now that we've talked about the weapons, let's talk about the tools present within the game. 
There are four default and two rundown specific tools available in Rundown 6, classifiable into two terms. Tools with great overall utility, such as the Bio Tracker, Seafoam Launcher, and Mine Deployer, and tools that can lock down choke points, plainly named as Sentry Guns. Let us first go over the utilities that are available. The Bio Tracker allows the wielder to detect hostile biosignatures. Sleeping enemies appear as white dots, while enemies in motion appear as red dots. When activated, Moving targets can be tracked for the whole team for up to a minute. This makes the bio tracker an invaluable asset in planning, identifying, and eliminating threats early, which is especially important for levels with poor visibility. When sneaking, the seafoam launcher can be a great addition to the team as it can completely freeze any enemy that touches the seafoam for up to 7 seconds. This can be great when dealing with scouts or giant targets during stealth portions of the game. Seafoam can also be used to reinforce or seal a door to improve their durability. Applying sufficient adhesive foam encases a door in seafoam, an effect observed here. Lastly, the mine deployer allows the user to deploy laser trip mines that explode when enemies come into contact with it. Placing traps behind doors where enemies must congregate and funnel through. All tall mines, specifically for giant targets, cleans up waves without firing a single bullet. As for the sentry guns, placing them in technically advantageous positions will allow for players to hold down a choke point for extended periods of time. The sentry guns can be divided into three categories. Staggering, for the auto sentry, short range, for the burst sentry, and long range, for the sniper sentry. Equipped with tungsten rounds, the auto sentry has a high rate of fire and staggering capacity in exchange for low base damage. As such, it excels in delaying enemies allowing for players to either spend more time in security scans or line up shots to quickly clear waves. The burst sentry can in all situations directly add extra firepower to the team. If placed in areas where the enemies are coming from, it can either kill or soften targets for players to quickly take down. Finally, the sniper sentry offers a low rate of fire and target acquisition time, but a powerful sniper shot at long ranges. It is heavily enabled in levels with long passageways where it can secure a kill on the incoming wave. Now that we've learned about the guns and tools, let's take a quick overview at the melee weapons. Melee weapons are the core component in maintaining stealth or holding off small waves of enemies. As of Rundown 6, there are 4 melee weapons that each have their own strengths. The knife offers a fast attack speed and short charging time, allowing for quick takedowns on small targets. The bat offers a fast charging time and high staggering capacity when fully charged, allowing for targets to be easily locked down. With a long range, the spear can reliably hit targets from a distance at the expense of not being able to run while charging. This is especially important when avoiding punches from giants. Finally, the sledgehammer is simply a jack of all trades, combining all the good qualities of the aforementioned melees. To wrap things up, let us now quickly look at how we can always build a balanced team loadout for blind runs. I once again emphasize that it is a good habit to review the mission brief before picking your loadout. This is because it informs you of whether you are potentially dealing with boss type enemies, many small enemies, or many giant enemies. As GTFO is a relatively dynamic game, the loadout suggestions mentioned here may not necessarily work for all runs, but will generally work for most. A balanced team loadout for blind runs will consist of any of the following. For primary weapons, it would be good to bring one support weapon, two general purpose weapons, and one precision weapon. For special weapons, it would be advisable to bring one crowd control weapon to help clear waves faster, two general type weapons to cover all bases, and one specialist type weapon to deal with giant targets. The recommended tools, which are always good to have, are one mine deployer, two sentry guns, or one sentry gun and one seafoam launcher, and one bio tracker. Do keep in mind that you can switch them around as you please. Finally, for the melee weapons, it is recommended to bring two sledgehammers or spears to deal with giants or scouts, and two knives or bats to quickly clear rooms or dispose of small waves. So this has been an informative guide on what most weapons, tools, and melee weapons can do, while the game is continuously evolving. Much of the subject matter that has been covered should not change as the rundowns change. Thank you so much for watching. Do leave your comments down below if you have any, and if you like what has been presented, do consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as I plan to make more such guide videos. See you!